In this section, we're going to use the setup defined in video one, and we're going to acquire some I squared C data packets. So the first thing I'm going to do is just move the trigger position to 10%. This will allow us to view most of the data after the trigger event, because I squared C data is a single shot event. So at the moment, the uh, trigger's on stop, so I'm going to arm the trigger condition, and it's now waiting for some I squared C data packets to occur. Uh, the device is now triggered, and we've acquired some I squared C data, and the uh, device has gone again to stop. So in the uh, top display, we can see some analog waveform. So this is the channel A, uh, and this is where we can monitor the DAC output, and we can see at this point the DAC on channel A switched and similarly on the right hand side is the scale factors for channel B and this is the uh, channel B uh, DAC output and we can see sometime later uh, this also switched uh, to a lower output level. At the uh, top of the screen we can see an overview of the uh, I squared C data which as we can see here in the digital display occurred in three bursts. So again, we can hover the mouse over here, and we can actually see the uh, first packet. Packet number two it was an address, and it was going to the slave address OC, which is actually the address of the DAC on the I squared C bus, and this was a write to that DAC, and there was an acknowledgement byte, and again, we can see the uh, transfer times of that packet. We can then see uh, a little later that packet three of the data was sent to the DAC and packet number four again was data and packet five was the final data packet sent to that particular address and that concluded that particular transfer and then there was a stop byte sent. Then there's a second transfer here so we get a start byte and this is the uh, next address this is in fact a, a addressing the same DAC again a write to that DAC and then three more data bytes sent in fact to the uh, channel B um, that then to switch and here we see the three uh, data bytes and finally uh, there's a stop byte at the end. So again we could uh, use uh, cursors in this uh, display if we want to say measure the time between the uh, switching events so we could position a cursor on when the channel A uh, DAC switched and when the channel B DAC switched and here we can measure the absolute time, but we can see the time between the switching edges, in this particular case, is 1.407 milliseconds. Uh, when you're finished with the cursor, you can just uh, turn them off again. But we could also uh, use them to uh, measure, say, the bode rate of the particular uh, data transfer. So we could zoom in and measure the uh, clock period. So if we can use the zoom tool here and zoom right in and then we can position the zoom box uh, over the data required and then we could put uh, time cursors uh, similarly here and measure the time of the actual uh, clock uh, we we'll take a period of, of the clock here so we can see the period of this particular clock was uh, 10 microseconds and while we're here, interestingly, we can see when the actual DAC switched here. In fact, if I just move one of those cursors exactly onto there, we can see at this point in time, the DAC had got enough information to switch to its new level, so it was using the data. But we can see, actually, there's a few more uh, transactions here of the uh, data, and these are, in fact, the acknowledgement bytes going back. So uh, at this point, it received the data to switch to the new level, and then the transfer was acknowledged. Again, we can return uh, to our full display.